In this study, we're going to look at the false god by the name of Moloch. He also goes by other names in the Bible, such as Moloch, spelled with an O, and Milcom, and Malcolm. And this false god was a metal statue whose stomach had fire inside of it. And it supposedly had metal arms that were controlled with chains. And when they placed the baby into the hands of this false god, they would pull the chains, the stomach would open, and go into the fire. So the Jews would take their little baby and put it into the hands of Moloch, which was in the valley of Gehenna. And I want to talk about these verses that have this false god in them and show how we can apply these verses to ourselves even today. Because we are in a world overcome by idol worship. And the first point I want to make is that if one of God's people worshipped Moloch, then they defiled his sanctuary. Leviticus 2 through 3 says, Again thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death, the people of the land shall stone him with stones, and I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Moloch to defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name. They make this sanctuary, they make his sanctuary unpure or unclean by doing this abominable act. And back then, God had a physical temple for his people. But now, in the church age, if you want to call it that, he now has his people as a spiritual temple. And 1 Corinthians six sixteen through 20 says, What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So that verse said, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you. And when you commit fornication, you are defiling the temple of God. 1 Timothy 1.10 talks about those who defile themselves with mankind, and that would be sodomy. When a Christian commits these wicked sins, he is also defiling God's temple. I don't believe a man can lose his salvation, but he can be killed by God for living for the flesh. And if you look at 1 Corinthians 3.16... It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And then verse 17, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Fornication has become a false god in the days we are living in, and God's people are forsaking God's command and committing adultery, watching pornography, and having pleasure in watching those that commit these sins. And one of the best ways to stay attracted to your wife is to quit looking at everybody else's wife. Your lust will lead to fornication, and that will defile the temple of God. You think you're not an idol worshiper because you don't have a statue or a molten image, but anything you put ahead of God and used to go against his commands, becomes an idol. And next, I want to point out that these idols don't just come overnight, but you actually make a place for them in your life. 1 Kings 11.5 says, For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, that is the other name for Moloch, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. So Solomon went through with the evil work of building a high place for his false gods. And not everyone who is evil is lazy. There are many evil workers who will do more evil work than any Christian or than some Christians will ever do good works. And you make a place for idols in your life when you cut out your Bible reading. Maybe every morning you used to get up and read the Bible. Now you never read the Bible. 
Maybe that Bible reading was replaced with golfing. Maybe your Bible reading was replaced by a video game. You might have used to pray without ceasing, but now you spend all your time talking to someone else. You make a place for it in your life when you quit doing the good things that you were doing and replace them with something that's not godly or that's not spiritual. Hold on to the good things you're presently doing because an idol could rise up in its place. You make a place for your idols. Ephesians 4 to 27 says, Neither give place to the devil. And many times as Christians, we get tired of fighting against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And we give in and let the devils crash at our house. We let them spend the night at our house. A man needs to try and burn the wicked stuff out of his house. He needs to get rid of the wicked pictures. It amazes me how a married man thinks it's okay to have a poster of a half-naked woman in his office or his bedroom. It's not okay to lust after someone just because they are celebrity. You know that still counts as lust even though you don't know them personally. A man needs to get rid of these wicked things that are in his house because these things are giving place to the devil and goes against the command of Ephesians 4.27. And the Bible calls idols the work of men's hands. And these things don't just show up. They are made by wicked hands and given place in your life. And next I'd like to point out false gods come in your life by intermarrying with heathen, unbelievers, and even worldly Christians. 1 Kings 11, 4 says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build in high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. If you marry a lost person, a worldly Christian, then you are going to be tempted to give yourself over to other gods. Solomon worshipped the Lord God Almighty, but he took strange wives and gave place to the devil. And many preachers say, if you marry a lost woman, then you have the devil for a monster-in-law. And you hear all these jokes about mother-in-laws and you think it's silly. That is until you get married. And many times if it wasn't for the fact your mother-in-law was a woman, you would swear she was the son of perdition. So don't go and marry an unsaved woman because many times their mothers are probably wicked. And the Bible makes it clear we shouldn't marry an unbeliever. Look at 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be my God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And the contemporary music crowd also breaks the command of these verses, because they also yoke up with all these unbelievers, these very wicked people, in the secular music. Music is associated with idol worship. See Daniel chapter 3 where Nebuchadnezzar has the people bow down to the image when they hear the music. And the contemporary music crowd sounds like the world. And they look like the world. The only difference is by good words and fair speeches they deceive the hearts of the simple. And the Christian rapper Lecrae is so shacked up with the world that he will promote an Eminem and Beyonce song. What kind of a Christian influence is that? He will make songs with unsaved rappers who blaspheme God's name. They might can fool a babe in Christ, but anyone who takes the Bible serious and has read the Bible is going to see through all this garbage that they put out. And this leads me to my next point. Men make buildings to worship their idols in. Many church buildings today are temples for idol worship. And that's where many times it comes 
becomes a problem when you call a church the house of God. Because that gives people the impression that all these churches around are the house of God. But that's not true. God isn't in every church. He doesn't come to... You can't find him in every church service. He may be at the door knocking and they won't let him in. But Acts 7.43 it says, Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And then Amos 5.26, But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and ye and your images, the star of your God which ye made to yourselves. Notice it says tabernacle for Moloch. And that star of your God could possibly be that inverted pentagram that you see on Baphomet. And if you don't, don't know what this is, I'm sure you've seen it and just didn't know on the cover of rock CDs and on t-shirts. And in the Church of Satan, if you've ever seen that, they have that, that star. And they also get priests to help them with their idol worship. Second Chronicles 11.15 says, And he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. And that is these mega churches and wicked contemporary churches with preachers like Andy Stanley. He is ordained for the worship of idols. At his so-called church, they play wicked rock songs like Renegade. They opened a service playing family sitcom theme songs like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I don't know if it was the same church, but I saw another one that sang the Friends theme song. The Friends TV show is a very wicked show with people shacking up. There's lesbians on it. And that is very strange to sing that in your church. It's bizarre. And I'm not against sports, and I don't think it's a sin to watch sports, but a lot of these stadiums are nothing but gigantic temples to worship your idols. And one of the ways a nation is destroyed is by taking up entertainment as a god. And if you listen to these sports fans, then you will hear them saying LeBron James is a basketball god. And I believe that statement, but he's a false god that is worshipped by many. And next, I want to point out that even today, people will sacrifice their children to their gods. Leviticus 18.21 says, And thou shalt not let any of the seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. You may not even know who Molech is, and you may still be sac sacrificing your kids to a false god. So these people were taking their seed and sacrificing it to the false god Molech, that is unnatural affection. It's not natural for you to not love your kid enough to not kill it. Kings in the Old Testament were even doing this act. King Manasseh in 2 Kings 21 made his own son to pass through the fire. And this makes me wonder why people would doubt that the men in our government, they doubt that they are capable of doing such horrible things. And if you want to see something disturbing, look up and study Bohemian Grove where some of the most supposed high class and big shot people will have a mock human sacrifice in front of a 40 foot owl. Men are still using groves and still sacrificing to false gods. It isn't just professing Satanists. It is the men who seem like good people in society. I don't write off any of the pedophilia and other accusations against these men because just because it sounds crazy, it could actually be true because these Old Testament kings were wicked. And I don't believe that we are getting better. I believe in de-evolution. If the kings back then were doing such horrible things that would seem wicked even to people today, imagine what the people in authority are doing today behind closed doors and in the dark that they think they're getting away with. Things don't get better, they get worse. These Old Testament kings didn't have the dark web. They didn't have a television. They didn't have video cameras to broadcast sin to the public, yet they still were extremely wicked. How much more in this present evil world are people wicked today? But men sacrifice their children to their God today when they put their gods before their children. If you have a TV show that is wicked and you let your kids see you watching it, then you are putting... Him, putting that false God before your child. 
You will let the TV show corrupt the mind of the kid because you love the show so much. And these people who have abortions and doctors who have abortions perform these abortions. They are false god worshipers. And the woman who gets the abortion is worshiping herself. She doesn't want to be inconvenienced by her own flesh and blood. That is a natural affection. That is wicked. And she is a selfie. She, the Bible says men shall be lovers of their own selves, and the doctor who performs the abortion worships money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. They are the definition of a sellout. The Bible even talks about those who make their son or daughter to pass through the fire being sellouts. Second Kings seventeen seventeen, and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord and to provoke him to anger. Many professing Christians pretend to be a servant of the Lord, but yet they deny him in their works. We aren't saved by works. We aren't kept saved by works, but Christians need to have some good works. And many times a person will go to a big shot church because they think it makes them look good. But yet deep down they're really worshiping their self and their money. If you turn to Zephaniah 1.5 you will see the other name for Moloch which is Malcolm. Zephaniah 1.5 And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops. And them that worship and that swear by the Lord and that swear by Malcolm. You see that? They swear by the Lord and they swear by Malcolm. The other name for Moloch. These people are basically trying to drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. 1 Corinthians 10.21 You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be the partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. And the church in Sardis in Revelation 3 had a name that they lived, but they were really dead. They looked like a saint, but they were really dead inside. And this is true for many. The Bible talks about Moloch being a god of the Ammonites. And look how the Ammonites came about in Genesis 19, 36 through 38. It says, Thus were both of the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab, the same as the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name ben -Ami, the same as the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So the children of Ammon came about by an incest relationship between a drunk father and wicked daughter. And the false god Moloch is still recognized today by the lost world. In the blasphemous show Supernatural, they have a whole episode about the false god Moloch and children's sacrifice. The devil is the one that writes all these TV shows and movies. And he puts things in these TV shows and movies that will be stolen plots from the Bible. But if you are unsaved... The thing you need to be worried about is getting saved. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again according to the Scriptures. So the gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried and he rose again the third day. And if you want to be saved, you have to put your trust in that gospel. Rely on what Jesus did on the cross to be your payment for sin. And don't rely on your own works and good things that you do to earn your way to heaven. Because Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Your righteousness that you have is never going to be good enough for you to make it to heaven. You need Jesus Christ's righteousness. And when you put your faith in the gospel... God gives you Jesus Christ's righteousness, and he takes away your unrighteousness. You are then seen righteous before God and then allowed to be taken to heaven when you die or at the rapture. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Not by works. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Your works aren't counted for righteousness. Your works are something you should do after you're saved. You don't stop sinning to get saved. You get saved and then God will help you get victory over sin. But before you're saved, you can't have victory over sin. How can a man who is dead and trespasses in sin have victory over sin? 
You have to get saved first. Uh, you're not saved by having a changed life. Some people say if a person is still committing certain sins after they're saved, then they didn't really get saved. And that's just a sneaky way to add in works to salvation. A Christian can commit any sin a lost person commits. And if, you do, if you're saved and you're not reading the Bible, praying, and staying in fellowship with God, you can expect to get off into sin. But if you're not saved, realize you're a guilty sinner, realize you can't save yourself, trust in the gospel. Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried. He rose again the third day. He died by shedding his blood, Colossians 1.14. And put your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, and you can have eternal life.